Good morning, Pastor Joe McClure here with Open Doors Community Church. It's good to have everyone turn out this morning. We appreciate all of those that are here on the Easter Sunday morning, as well as those that are watching me and listening to the sound of my voice. I want to say Happy Easter. I would like to talk to you a few minutes about the last few hours of the life of Christ before he was crucified. <clears throat> and I'm going to read a area in the Bible that was some thousand years or so before Jesus went through what he went through for your sins and my sins at the cross. And I want to read about what was happening and what was prophesied before it came to pass, and then in the New Testament, it came to pass, and it's the very reason that we have eternal life, that we do have life after death, because there is life after death. So let's open up in prayer and uh, get this thing started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we want to pray this Easter morning to most people, it's another day, but to those that celebrate Easter because of the resurrection and the God that we serve, we do know there is life after death. And because Jesus was the first one born from among the dead when he was crucified and laid in that tomb, and on the third day, the scriptures tell us that he was resurrected to new life before he ascended into heaven. And that's the hope of glory that we have. That's the difference between our religion and every religion under the sun is we serve a risen Savior. Be with those today, Father, that are seeing and within the sound of my voice that today is a celebrated holiday, but it would be celebrated into their life because they would come to know you today as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. So let's talk about this. The Easter story is at the heart of Christianity. On Good Friday, Jesus Christ was executed by crucifixion. His body was taken down from the cross and he was buried in a cave, a borrowed tomb. The tomb was guarded with an enormous stone that was rolled over, placed over the opening just so that the body could not be stolen. And the soldiers did this because they didn't want anyone to be able to claim that Oh, see, he's risen. He's not here. He's gone. Because they remember what Jesus told them. That he would be put into the hands of the enemy. And that he would die. But on the third day, he would be raised to life. Now, we're not talking about reincarnation. For those out there that may be thinking about that right now. That's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about the same Jesus that died for your sin and my sin is the same Jesus that three days later rose from the dead to be the Lord and Savior of our life. And if you find that hard to believe, well, guess what? Sometimes it's even harder to articulate it. But there are a lot of times in the Bible you've got to let the heart comprehend what the mind may not fully understand. But the last few hours of his life, I want to share with you that he went through mock trials and was beaten, hit with staff, sticks, punched in the face, spit at, ridiculed, mocked, laughed at. And he went through this horrendous ordeal for your sin and for my sin. You see, in Genesis, the Bible says in the beginning, as God created everything, for there was nothing made that was not made by God. It says that God made man in his own image. He made them both, male and female. And we know that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it talks about 
The problem is that, and in Genesis chapter 3, when it talks about the fall of man, that what happened? Man chose his self over God. He chose that he knew better how to take care of himself than God did. And it's been happening ever since. That people have been making their own decisions, whether good or bad, and been making them without even the thought of the Creator who created every person, every man, woman, boy, and girl. And it goes on that the fall of man, and the Bible says in Romans 1.27 that man began to worship created things rather than the creator. And it's been that way ever since. So our sin, our iniquity, the Bible calls it, has separated us from God. In heaven, there is no sin. Like there is no sickness, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, nor suffering, nor cancer, nor disease. None of that is in heaven. But all of that is here on this earth because of the fall of man. Because we chose our way over God's way. We chose to believe the lie rather than believe the truth. We chose evil over good. We chose Satan over God. And look how it's being done today. In some of your more liberal states, look how they're holding picket signs. California especially. We don't want God in California. But you know what? God is God all by himself. You can't move God. You can't make God do something. He is God. He can take the very breath from your mouth just like that if he chose to. You know, I've had family. I missed Vietnam by just a few short years. And I had family that was serving over there in Nam. Some of them done tour, uh, two tours over there twice. What a horrific war. It was, and how many lost their lives over politics, and I'm not going to get into that. But I had a family member told me that when people were hit, whether it was by mortar, bullets, or whatever, two things they always screamed out. One was either, oh God, or oh mama. And look what our people have been going through ever since in the service. These are people that should be highly respected and honored. And how many of them have been treated with such disrespect. This world is in terrible shape. That's why one of these days Jesus Christ is coming. And when he comes, he's going to set everything straight. And there's nothing anybody's going to be able to do about it. You may be saying this morning, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. But it don't matter what you believe. He's still coming whether you believe it or not. You may think, I don't think about it. It doesn't matter what you think about. He's still coming whether you think about it or not. The Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed once for man to die and then face the judgment. Why? Why the judgment after we die? Because there is life after death. There's an eternity out there. You're either going up or you're going down. It doesn't matter what church you go to, what denomination you are. If you go up, your tag will blow off. If you go down, it'll burn off. It doesn't matter where you go. What matters is what have you done with Jesus Christ? And because of the fall of men, you know, choosing our way over God's way, and God does not take anything away from us that's good for us. He tries to remove everything from us that's bad, that hinders our life, our relationship, that causes us to be prideful, arrogant people, 
selfish people that look out for nobody but number one and disregard everybody else. You can't truly love people and be kind and good to people if you're looking out for number one. And sin is selfish. It looks after nothing but itself. So please listen to me. Our sin separated us from God. And I don't know why God done it. I'm not God. But God saw the only way to bring us back to himself was through his son. So the Bible says in the book of John that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that was Jesus Christ who willingly was brutally, brutally beaten, savagely beaten to where he was unrecognizable, hanging on the cross, he looked like a bloody piece of meat that his own mother wouldn't have known it was him if she hadn't have saw her son being flogged. You see, the Jewish scourging is 40 save one. It's 39 lashes with a whip of cat of nine tails that was weaved into leather straps and bone and, and metal and all kinds of things, broken pottery and so that every time it hit, it ripped the skin open when the whip was pulled back. But Jesus didn't take a, a Jewish scourging. He took a Roman scourging, and they beat you until they were so tired they couldn't beat you anymore. And that's why you saw in the Passion of the Christ where many people thought that it was unbiblical for the way he was beaten, but it was not. It was biblical. That's why they beat him on the backside until there was nothing left. And then the commander flipped his hand, meaning turn him over and beat him again. And if you saw the movie, you saw where they beat one at a time and beat him until they were so tired they couldn't continue. And from head to toe, he was ripped to shreds. That's what Jesus went through for you and I. And this was on Friday, but on Sunday, Easter morning, God raised him from the dead. But I want to share with you a little bit of what he went through. <clears throat> and in Psalms chapter 22, I want you to listen to this. Some thousand plus years before it actually happened, when Jesus was beaten savagely, and crucified on a cross. I want you to listen to Psalms 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the groanings of my words. Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, and I am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. And you, our fathers, put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. Jesus is talking about what he went through when he cried out, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Elo, elo, ilama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When God had to put all of the sin of the world on the shoulders of Jesus Christ, and then God had to turn and look away as Jesus took the filth from every single one of us, he was the perfect lamb that was led to slaughter so that you and I could have the chance for eternal life if we would so repent of our sins and receive him as Savior and Lord. Listen to this. Jesus cries out. Verse 
but I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults at me as they shake their heads as they walk by and curse at me. Mm. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. They're mocking him. While he's brutally hanging on a cross, struggling to even breathe, Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help me. And he goes on and listen to the cries of the Son of God for you and I. I am being poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. I want you to know when they crucified him on that cross and they brought him up and that cross fell into that hole and it jolted when it hit. It dislocated every bone in his body as he hung there for hours. My strength is dried up. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Listen to this. Dogs have circled me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me, meaning he could literally see his bones where his skin was ripped from his body. My God, my God. They divided my garments among them as they cast lots for my clothing, gambling at the feet of Jesus. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. And then it goes on to declare they literally had ripped beard from his face, plucked it right out of his face. They beat him with sticks. They beat him in the face with their fists. This was before he was crucified. Oh, my God. And then he cried out, by God, forgive them at the cross. While they're doing all this to him, forgive them, God, for they know not what they're doing. And they knew what they were doing. But what Jesus was talking about is they had no idea of the hell that they were going to pay for what they had done and what they were doing. And you know, when the guard pierced his side, when the Roman soldier pierced his side to make sure he had died before they took him down, when that blood and water spilled out of his side and it hit the guard, the guard dropped and cried out, surely he was the son of God because the blood of Jesus saves and cleanses. And that's why in October the 7th, 1994, I received him as my Lord and Savior. And this Easter, there is no better way to celebrate than let go of being sick and tired in the life that you're living without God before it is everlastingly, eternally too late. This world is on a crash course for hell itself, spinning totally out of control. The last thing you're going to want is to leave this world as nasty as it is and go to something worse off that you can't even imagine or articulate how horrible hell is going to be. It wasn't created for you, but if you reject Jesus Christ, it'll be your home for all eternity. Don't do that. 
Listen to what I've said. He went to the cross for you and I, and he died a horrible death so you wouldn't have to. Repent of those sins. Let it go and trust in God. Even if you don't fully understand it, it still works. Please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins, everything I have ever done wrong, God. I'm opening up my heart and my life, and I'm asking you, Lord, come in, Jesus. Forgive me. Save me that you may be the Lord and Savior of my life, and I will commit my ways to you. But, Lord, you help me. I can't do this by myself. In Jesus' name, amen. That is the greatest decision you have ever made. God bless you. You get in a good Bible-believing church that will preach the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help them God. And if you can't find one, you tune in to old Pastor Joe every Sunday morning at 1030. I'd be honored to be your pastor, and I'd be honored to preach the gospel. Amen. God bless you. You have a great Easter, a great rest of the day, and until next time, amen and hallelujah.